You're listening to the Drive Forward Podcast. We're cruising through the latest in transportation to inspire a better tomorrow. Welcome to the very first episode of the Drive Forward Podcast. I'm your host, Emily Jankowski. Today, we're chatting with Northwestern University's Hani Mamasani, who is a professor of civil and environmental engineering at the McCormick School of Engineering. Well, welcome to the Drive Forward Podcast, Professor Mamasani. We really appreciate your willingness to chat with us. So let's go ahead and delve into these questions here. Um, My pleasure. Great. Uh, When did you begin your role as Professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Northwestern's McCormick School of Engineering? Um, I have been at Northwestern since the uh, fall of 2007. Um, I joined Northwestern uh, from the University of Maryland. uh, And then before that, I was at the University of Texas in Austin, uh, starting uh, way back in 1982. Wow. Wow. Certainly an expansive career. My goodness. (laughs) Wow. Well, tell me, you know, what's what's some of your current research efforts there in Evanston? What are you exploring? I think I've I've read a little bit about your work with smart cities, maybe a little bit of infrastructure. Is that correct? So, um, you know, our, our um, transportation center here at Northwestern has a fairly broad portfolio of research activities uh, in both sort of the, you know, the urban setting, uh, the uh, operations, uh, planning, uh, systems, um, economics, freight and logistics. Uh, but uh, my own uh, research uh, these days has been focused uh, very much on the impact of new technologies on uh, transportation and mobility, uh, particularly looking at the uh, impact of connectivity, connected vehicle systems, uh, and automation uh, on uh, our transportation system and what and how we should be getting ready, I guess, to really leverage uh, all the opportunities that these new technologies might offer. Absolutely, absolutely. And when you talk about connectivity, I think one of the big buzzwords happens to be the word sensor. Is that correct? (laughs) Sensors, uh, but it's also more than sensors. Uh, Hmm. Sensors tend to be uh, generally uh, sort of associated with fixed locations on the infrastructure. Uh, Increasingly with connectivity, we look at uh, vehicles themselves communicating with each other and communicating also with the infrastructure. So giving us a much more complete view of uh, of, uh, interactions that are taking place in the system and also giving us the opportunity to then uh, better uh, sort of um, manage and, you know, intervene, make the system safer, etc. Sure, sure. And, you know, as part of your ongoing efforts, is there a particular part of your research that you're most proud of that you and perhaps your students have kind of accomplished to help really uh, impact the public, whether it be in now or even looking at futuristic problems? Well, I guess staying with the same theme, actually, you know, we've we've been um, fairly active in this realm, I would say, for about the past five years or so. Uh, And uh, we've done a sequence series of projects, uh, mostly funded by the um, U.S. Department of Transportation, the Federal Highway Administration, uh, looking at how the set of tools that engineers and planners use need to be uh, sort of adapted uh, and kind of move to the next generation of capabilities to really address these new operational uh, capabilities, uh, these, these new technologies. And so, uh, for instance, uh, we did a um, we, we did a study, uh, fairly, um, at the time, it seemed like one of the first studies that had been done on trying to document the uh, operational impacts uh, of automation and connectivity on, uh, on freeway traffic. Uh, you know, what would it do to, uh, to capacity? What would it do to the sort of stability of flow that is the formation of congestion and so on? And uh, that particular study, you know, was quite widely disseminated. And, uh, you know, the paper that was published from that has become kind of an instant hit uh, in terms of being, you know, cited and by various wow. uh, other researchers all around the world. And so uh, it's, it's uh, you know, we're, we're, we're grateful when this happens, I, I guess. And, you know, we, we know that the work is having some impact. Uh, another related area where we've been doing quite a bit of work is, again, sort of the emergence of new mobility alternatives in urban areas with uh, autonomous vehicles and, and mobility as a service concepts and some of the work we've been doing in that area has also had uh, quite a bit of impact. 
Sure. And when you talk about these other areas, uh, is there a particular interest, uh, maybe ride sharing, or uh, can you maybe identify some of those specifics? Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, I mean, of course, we, we, we have uh, forms of ride sharing today, but with automation, uh, it is envisioned that the economics of these systems will, will, will change quite a bit, uh, and therefore uh, the cost. Uh, should would, 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 would go down and the uh, autonomy provides operational flexibility that then allows uh, some of these alternatives to become uh, very um, practical and useful for for uh, for residents in urban areas and so we've been working on algorithm on, on first of all identifying different business models for mobility as a, as a service um, offering with different types of vehicles integrated with transit uh, or you know more or less integrated with existing transit services and uh, sort of the evolution from uh, existing services like uber lyft and others uh, and, and you know to uh, a situ to a case where um, these services become increasingly uh, automated and so um, so we we have indeed been, been working on both the the sort of uh, um, business models uh, mm -hmm. from kind of an economic financial perspective as well as an operational perspective in terms of algorithms that one would use to uh, um, to, to operate these systems uh, you know in, in, an, in an efficient manner and then strategies on, on at a more you know at a more strategic level strategies for how different services might be provided in, in a complementary way in an urban setting, particularly looking at legacy sort of conventional public transportation, which remains a very effective way of moving large numbers of people to like single destinations like central business, you know, like downtown Chicago, sure. for example, uh, in conjunction with the use of uh, ride sharing type, type options, more, you know, in more suburban sort of residential areas. Wow, wow. It's really exciting to think about, uh, you know, how many complex situations are really going to come from uh, incorporating connected and autonomous vehicles and what a fork at a road uh, we're kind of at right now in terms of transportation, a really exciting time, maybe Absolutely. even uh, uh, as exciting as the interstate era even. <laughs> um, so that's really great to see that you're, you're looking at all areas of how this is going to really impact people and the movement of those, those people. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, uh, it's been really <laughs> inspiring. You know, I mean, uh, that's the the other thing. You know, we work with students mostly. Of course, mm -hmm. we're we're a university research center, and uh, it's just been uh, uh, really inspiring to see just how motivated students are 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 when it comes to these topics. I mean, they're so uh, enthusiastic. Uh, and to 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 work on to have the opportunity to work on these kind of areas, and once you get you know bright students uh, working on something, there's just no limit, uh, in fact, to to what you know to, to what they will come up with. Wow, wow, and and it, professor, you're mentioning here that you know you are the director of the Northwestern University Transportation Center there. Um, tell me what's what's maybe some of the day to day life like there, you know, for your students and the work that they're producing. What's kind of the hands on experience that you foresee them getting throughout their studies? You know, we're we're uh, a relatively um, small uh, center um, um, in terms of being primarily faculty and student oriented as opposed to uh, large professional staff. Uh, um, so uh, so our projects tend to typically involve uh, one, two, you know, three faculty members and then uh, again from one to five or six uh, students that may be involved in these projects. And so, uh, you, you know, a lot of the, the work we do tends to be heavily sort of data driven uh mm -hmm. you know we do a lot of uh data analytics uh and uh you know a lot of algor algorithm development simulations of large-scale systems and so on but one thing with our work it's always uh very much uh, sort of motivated by by reality by real problems and so while we look at future conditions mm -hmm. We look at those in the context of, uh, you know, existing networks, for instance. So we have a really effective Chicago test bed that we've been using for a lot of the studies that we do. Um, we also do work directly with, again, with with a 
agencies, and I mentioned the Federal sure. Highway Administration. We also work with state agencies, planning agencies, and so on. And with them, we, we have, in fact, systems that are deployed and running. Uh, for instance, we have a 24-7 uh, um, a, a, a sort of real-time a traffic forecasting system that's currently running in Kansas City, mostly to 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 deal with. Uh, um, so it integrates weather forecasts with the traffic forecast to, to look ahead and anticipate uh, any problems that may arise because of rain or snow or whatever, wow. and then support the uh, traffic management center in dealing with these. Uh, and so our students are effectively, uh, you know, running you know these models that that are feed uh, you know the the, uh, the, the, H, the you know the traffic management center uh, with with the forecast that we generate on a, on a, on a real time basis. So so we do have some very applied practical projects. We also do as at the center. Uh, you, you know we, we have a very strong um, engagement with uh, with the private sector with industry, sure. particularly on the. So you know I mentioned the area of mobility uh, as a, you know of, of urban mobility, which increasingly has a private sector element to it. Uh, but but also you know on the freight and logistics side, uh, um, you know we have a business advisory council that that includes uh, some of the major players in you know railroads, trucking, uh, airlines, um, brokerage, etc. And our center typically will work you know works with with several companies at any given time, uh, working on hands-on projects again uh, you know where they have some you know unique data that they are willing to uh, share with us, and we we, we construct engagements of our students collaboratively with these companies so that we then develop um, you know again advanced analytics and capabilities that help leverage um, uh, um, you know th that kind of data for the company's sort of operational and, and planning purposes. Wow wow it sounds like a really uh, lucrative model that you have going there both for public safety purposes as well as business and agency interest and just really uh, you know helping helping others out as best as possible to ensure the, the ultimate safety of the public, right? Thank you. Yeah, I don't know about lucrative. I mean, Lewis, we're we're a not for profit organization, sure. of course, uh, but we, we do try to generate resources to so that we can fund our students and researchers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of keeping the public in mind and public safety, I know a lot of your efforts have been focused on connected and autonomous vehicles like we've chatted about, but you've really been a key member in Illinois Center for Transportation's um, hoping or aim to shape the future with its uh, transportation initiative known as the Smart Transportation Infrastructure in Initiative, which mm -hmm. aims to build a high-speed connected and autonomous vehicle track known as the Illinois Autonomous and Connected Track at the former Chanute Air Force Base here in Rantoul. So maybe tell me a little bit about your involvement in that and what's your role in this initiative? So, well, first of all, um, you know, we're, we're delighted to be part uh, of this and, and, and I would add an integral part to, uh, mm -hmm. to, the, to the development uh, of this truly unique resource, not only for Illinois, but really for for the nation ultimately, and, and even I think uh, at a global scale, I think that would be a truly unique uh, facility. Uh, we're really grateful for the leadership uh, that Dr. Al Qadi has been demonstrating in this in this uh, in this regard. Uh, I think he has uh, um, you know been um, amazingly effective at, at building the the kind of coalition uh, and the kind of support for it from you know from the key stakeholders and the key players and we've really been uh, you know along his side to just to support that effort and then bringing our own constituency particularly from the private sector getting companies to sign on to uh, uh, to you know to, uh, sign on as potential uh, stakeholders and users uh, of, of the kind of facility that 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 uh, that is being envisioned but what really um, is uh, is impressive I think and what makes it really unique is this is envisioned you know that the, that the SCII is and the, and the test facility is envisioned as a kind of cradle to grave type of, uh, well, hopefully not grave, but, uh, you know, an, 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 
an area where you can incubate technologies. You can start from doing, you know, very basic developmental work all the way to testing sort of full scale vehicles, ultimately taking them out on the interstate highway. And if you're looking at things like, uh, you know, distribution and urban logistics and so on, then you have the town of Frontool, which has effectively opened itself up to being a, a whole test village, if you wish, so that you can then use things like drones for delivery that are, you know, that are being deployed from autonomous trucks uh, to distribute packages and so on. So, so the, the, the potential, I think, is, is really, really uh, quite significant. Uh, and I'm, I, I, I couldn't be more excited uh, to see this move forward. Absolutely. Well, you know, how do you how do you see the track benefiting people in Illinois, particularly having something like this um, come out of a university standpoint and collaborate with so many other different universities? What do you think some of the social impacts are going to be for something like this on the public? You know, I think the model, I think uh, you're only going to be a sort of technology leader, ultimately, uh, when you have, you know, the, the best minds working together, uh, you know, from the university environment, working with uh, industry and public agencies to accomplish this kind of vision. Uh, you know, these, these are fairly complicated uh, systems uh, that take a lot of effort and work to, to, to kind of work together because it in, does involve, you know, the, the, the public. Uh, ultimately, this is not something you just do in the lab. Uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, private sector can't do it alone. The public sector can't do it alone. And so we end up creating here an environment where all these resources can come together. And I think what it means for Illinois is that if you uh, really today, if you, if you want to be and, and remain uh, a leader in this very important uh, market segment, which is the whole area of transportation and logistics, where Illinois has historically been, you know, a sort of a nation's hub, if you wish, um, then it's, it's very important that you lead in the development of these technologies. And, and what SCII, you know, the key role that it would play is, is, is kind of a bridge really between the more fundamental technological developments on one hand, and then the deployment and application and, and, and sort of, you know, application and deployment at scale of these technologies. Sure, absolutely. Thank you so much for answering that question for me. Um, I guess one of my last questions would be, how do you see the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and Northwestern University's engineering programs continuing to partner together in order to shape this really formative time in, in, the, in transportation? You know, when, um, since I've, I guess I moved to Northwestern in, in 2007, we've had a, a really good um, uh, collaboration uh, with the um, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and also University of Illinois at Chicago. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the, the reason we have a, a good good collaboration as fundamentally our programs are very complementary to one another uh yes there are areas where you know we, we have common strength but we also have a lot of areas where we really complement each other uh you know university of uiuc has uh you know is located in, in a way where we're doing large-scale experimental testing for example uh is, is is available and possible uh we're in a very urban environment by the lake uh we're unable to sort of uh, do, you know, we, we just don't have the luxury of, of land and space and so on. Uh, but then we have uh, folks who have uh, a lot of, uh, you know, expertise in some of these technology areas and, and systems aspects and economics and policy and so on. And so there's been really good complementarity. But also ultimately, it's the fact that we, we are you know, we're really pursuing the same objectives here, which is to make our transportation system, you know, better and to uh, improve mobility, sustainability for, for the public. And so we, we, we align on, you know, on objectives. Uh, and we also uh, happen to, you know, to, to work very well together. I think, uh, you know, we're, we're all, um, you know, um, scientists and engineers with, with uh, you know, with, with a public mission, essentially, and, and educators and, and fundamentally uh, through through uh, cooperation and collaboration, uh, we can, you know, we, we're, the sum is, is greater. I mean, the, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Sure, sure. 
Well, fantastic. That's all I had for today. Uh, really wanted to thank you again for taking the time out of your busy schedule and your willingness to share your passion with us. I really appreciate it. It's been a true pleasure and I hope Absolutely. you take care. It's my pleasure. Um, thank you, Emily. And uh, if I can address any question, other questions for you, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Will do. And listeners, thank you for staying tuned. The Drive Forward Podcast is a production of Illinois Center for Transportation, a research center of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. We invite you to subscribe to the Drive Forward Podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Spotify. And while you're there, feel free to like or rate us. Thanks for listening. Keep the conversation rolling by using the hashtag DriveForward.